The nation of Kailasa has really started making some diplomatic strides, like becoming sisterhood cities around our country, places like Newark, New Jersey. But there's one problem here. Kailasa doesn't exist. It had all the makings of a diplomatic ceremony. Newark Mayor Ross Baraka, alongside a representative from the United States of Kailasa, signing a cultural trade agreement to become sister cities in January. Officially sister cities. Kailasa calling it a bilateral agreement with the United States of America. So you might be wondering, where is the United States of Kailasa? Turns out, it doesn't exist. The guru, with dozens of videos on a YouTube channel documenting his teachings, claims he left India in 2019 to seek protection. I have the immunity of non-prosecutable and immunity and protection as the head of the state. He was arrested there years earlier, accused of sexual assault charges by five women who say he abused them at a religious retreat. Local reports say he appealed the charges and eventually fled India. The city of Newark, New Jersey, got duped into signing a cultural agreement with a fake nation governed by an alleged serial rapist. Newark didn't scratch their heads and think, hmm, well, wait a second, where is Kailasa? What kind of language do they speak? No one was even curious. All they needed to hear is that it's a Hindu nation off the coast of Ecuador. Even Newark voters are embarrassed, and it kind of takes a lot to embarrass them. I think that's embarrassing that he didn't do his background research before entertaining them. But it wasn't just Newark, New Jersey. As promised last night, Primetime did some digging. We're finding out the supreme fake pontiff of Hinduism has a long list of cities that he's duped. According to the state of Kailasa's website, there have been over 30 American cities, 30, that have signed a cultural partnership with the fake nation of Kailasa. Cities from Richmond, Virginia to Dayton, Ohio, to Buena Park, Florida, literally all over the map. Look, Primetime did our due diligence. We listened to Don Lemon and we just Googled it. And we reached out to a bunch of these cities and asked, did you sign this? And so far, most of the cities have confirmed these proclamations are, in fact, true. Jacksonville, North Carolina, told us, quote, our proclamations with Kailasa are not an endorsement. They are a response to a request. And we do not verify the information that is requested. So cities aren't Googling. If someone wants a proclamation, someone gets a proclamation. They'll just say you're an exotic Hindu island and name a street after you. And it's not just mayors or city councils. The people running the federal government are falling for it, too. According to the pontiff of Hinduism, two members of Congress have given Kailasa special congressional recognition. One of them is Congresswoman Norma Torres. She represents Rancho Cucamonga in California, and she's on the House Appropriations Committee, very powerful committee. So the person who decides what we spend our tax dollars on just got duped by an alleged rapist guru with a fake country. But it's not just Democrats, both sides of the aisle. Republican Troy Balderson from Ohio also presented, quote, his divine holiness and pontiff of Hinduism congressional recognition. Now, this congressman may not have graduated from college, but you don't need a degree to, as Don Lemon says, Google it. All you need is five minutes to realize Kailas is fake. If you go to their website, aside from all the spiritual videos, the first thing you see is an application for a free and quick Kalesian passport. All you have to do is a quick five-minute crash course on the history of Kailasa, and we made Johnny do it. And for the first time in primetime history, we're proud of Johnny. Not only did he learn to say hi in Kalesian, but Johnny got his passport, and it took him five minutes. Yes, Johnny is now a dual citizen of Kailasa. That means Johnny can now fly to the nation of Santa Hindu Dharma, another nation that doesn't exist. Johnny has dual citizenship. But no one in the government was curious. Literally, no one said, wait a second, maybe we could vet this person. At what level does someone say, wait a second, this looks fake? We are being governed by imbeciles, idiots who won't ask a question. Asking questions is a no-no, remember? They call you a conspiracy theorist if you ask a question about the lab leak or what's on the laptop. They'll just clap and salute when they hear a Hindu nation is coming to town.